and the finished work of Calvary. Here we stand and proclaim, we proclaim victory.
do not understand. I will do this alone in the house and I will go crazy. I will dance and fall alone. So the enemy knows. We have to announce. That we are gods. Just like Moses was made to be God to Pharaoh. Because God said to him, I will make you, make you a God unto Pharaoh. And your brother Aaron will be a prophet to you. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. We are not here to look down on ourselves. Because we are priests. Belonging to the royal priesthood. Hallelujah. So we are announcing everywhere here. In this atmosphere, that whatever the enemy has planted, whatever he has deployed, we are about to exude it, to uproot it, and we are putting it on the surface. We are about to do that. Bible says in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit came and it descended upon the people who were there. In that gathering, there were people from all over the world. And the Bible mentions even different people that were there. Tribes that were there, nations that were there. And outside were Jews. You must understand some of the Jews were still questioning what they were seeing even when Jesus was still walking there. That is why at the end they said these people are drunk. But what God did he put different languages in the mouths of those people who were there. They began to speak in different languages which were not their languages. Those who were standing outside had these people speaking in different languages. Had them speaking in their own languages. And they did not understand. They said, how did they know our languages? God is about to take that car. He's about to take that money. That is sitting in the hands of a wrong person. And he's about to give it to you. Because it belongs to you. That is why those who are standing would say, How did they know our language? Because they begin to speak in the language we thought they did not know. You know, when the Holy Spirit comes, He does what He wills. He acts as He wills. He can take what belongs to the wicked and give it to those. We never thought they must have it. The Bible says so. He will take the riches of the wicked and give it to you. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. When the Holy Spirit comes, He enters even where they said, I won't get it. So when the Holy Spirit is upon you, what they think you will not get, where they thought you will not enter, that job they thought you would not get. That position they thought you would not get. The Lord is about to take away from the one who's always there. Because there are 
people when we are asleep, they specialize in waking up and coming to take what does not belong to them. I'm not talking about things now. I'm talking about those who work in the spirit. They are able to come into your heart and take the brain of your child and give your child a dead brain and take what does not belong to them. And the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm about to do what I did in Pentecost. I'm about to give people languages which are not their languages. They will speak and those who are watching will say, how did he learn to drive? You thought you never get married. How did you learn to wear a heel? You don't understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying this to please you. This is like the works of the Holy Spirit. Jesus. Say to the person next to you. What belongs to me? Is full of life. Dead ones. Are not to mine. Through the mirror, 
espumo. I do not hold the sword in vain. Every witch on a wizard that is told to find the way of God, they will see what will happen. You are not hearing me. The car you drive is not just a car. First Kings. Chapter 3, verse 24. I'll tell you where to stop. At that time when God was talking to me, something was happening somewhere. God was preparing him. Preparing a stage for him for his first performance as a king. While the enemy was doing something in another house, are you hearing what I'm saying? Because when he woke up, he realized it was just a dream. But because it was just a dream, I will not fold my arms. I want to go and have a party. And he had this feast. When they were still busy, the party was interrupted by two prostitutes. You, you know the story. Because they were holding two children. Another one was dead. Another one was alive. And they were busy screaming. Hey, this woman killed my child. When I was sleeping, she killed my child. And my child for the dead one. And the one who did it was the one who was screaming the more. And that's what is happening in the community. People who at night when we are sleeping, they fly. They do things. They come to our places. While we are sleeping. While we are not seeing anything. And the woman who deserved the child was quiet. And the Bible says, when this one was making noise, the king Bring me a sword. I do not hold this sword in vain. Bring me a sword. I would imagine those who were watching, those who were at that party, they were wondering, this one, his father never ruled like that. His father never solved problems like that. And little did they know that when the enemy was busy at night, Sleeping on top of the child, killing the child. God was working something with Solomon. In a dream, I want you to be excited today. But that dream that you had, God is working something. That is manifesting the future. And Solomon knew that this is not just a dream. That's why he said, I want people who can hear. She was now holding a child who so does not belong to her. Just like the enemy. They are holding what belongs to you. Just like that person in your body. They have taken what does not belong to them. But the Lord says, the sword I hold today, I'm about to rule in your favor. Because I do not hold this sword in vain. And he said to the other one, Was it long, 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 yeah? Check this, I want you to cut this child into two. 
The Bible said, this is the the mother of the child who was alive. No, Perceived. in her stomach. Oh God. You know when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do?
our sins that only took. I say, Lord, I know what you've called us to do. To preach salvation and to preach against corruption. And I know my wife did not do it. I remember during the week I phoned why is man Harry? And I told him what is happening. He just started in Mesopotamia. He said, Let's pray together. The man of God has sent me here to start school in Mesopotamia. He said, Okay, fine, let's pray. And we began to pray. And we prayed. After prayer, I knew it is done. Whatever the servant of God did later, I agreed to because I also know that what they are trying to take from my wife it belongs to her in a short space of time those who thought now she's going will be able to steal now she's going will be able to do things that we don't want them to do the letter was issued Thank you for coming to this. She stayed. She stayed at home almost the whole year. All the charges. Nothing was found against her. The Lord said, when they dragged you before the courts, and that time, don't worry about what you say. Rule in your faith. That child, that brain, the two 